Are we supposed to start at 8.30 or can we start right now? Uh, yes, right now, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Rogelio Hasimoto from the Center for Research in Mathematics, and I'm going to be chairing this, this session. Uh, which is uh, session CS4, computer science and engineering and image analysis. And we want to start with the first uh, presentation, uh, late fusion of text and images for, for uh, predicting user interest in Pinterest social network, presented by Areli Cabrera Oros. Please go ahead, uh, uh, Areli. We can start now. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ariel Cabrera, and I'm going to present the work. For BIM, we must first first a word about the big amount of data that is generated from social media. This data can provide us different aspects from a user, like their personalities, their localization, their possible friends, sentiments, and the interest. The user's interest can be useful for attached various tasks like developing system recommendations or improving their experience or inside these platforms. However, in social media, information can be presented in different modalities like text, image, audio, etc. These modalities can reveal different aspects from a user. For example, we can have an image of a landscape and their textual description can provide us a description about a sentiment. We want to leverage this information applying the fusion. Fusion can occur at different levels in our process. We can have an early fusion, late or cross-modality fusion. One of the objectives of this work is to apply the late fusion in image and text for revealing the interest prediction. And the other is to demonstrate the effectiveness of current deep learning models to extract effectively these, these features. For attached these tasks, we choose to use the Pinterest social network. Pinterest is, uh, is presented as visual browser where a user can say pins and a pin is composed by an image in a textual description. These pins belong to a board, and this board can be assigned to one of the theory to predefine categories from Pinterest. We are saying that these, these different categories correspond to the interest of a user. That is to say the, that if a user saves many pins of fashion, this user has an interest for the fashion. Our methodology is divided on training and testing. We first take our rate of raw data and divide it into image and text. Next, we made a preprocessing step for adapting the data to the respective, the respective models. For image, we consider six different corrective learning models. And for words, we use uh, word embeddings. The output of these models is a feature vector that work as an input for our classifier. Our classifier will be optimized with a series of parameters that we'll discuss later. And in our testing part, we also take our new data and divide it into image and text for made all the previous steps like preprocessing, then obtain our feature vector and our Classify your prediction. This prediction will be fusion. And then we pass to our final classifier for obtain our interest prediction. At first, our data set was composed for more than 1 million pins, 600 Nazi users, and 32 categories. These are some statistics about our initial data set. And then we made a preprocessing fast. In the preprocessing, we only have consideration the descript textual descriptions with, with more than four words 
and we delete all the duplicate and corrupted image. After these preprocessing steps, the disposition of our data is shown in the in the plot. And we can note that some categories have several thousand pins, while others barely have a thousand. For unsolved the unbalanced class problem, we choose only the categories with more than 1,000 pins for finally obtain 90 29,000 pins, 29 categories, and 1,000 pins per category. For obtained or text representations, we use three different word embeddings models. These models were pertained on different data. Word to Beck was training with Google News, Fast Text were with Wikipedia and Glow with Twitter. We first divide our textual description in tokens, and these tokens, the model search the, the feature representation on these pertained models. Then we made an average of all the descriptions for obtaining an output vector from 300 length in case of word to back and fast text and 200 in case of globe. In the image, we can see an example of word to back architecture where a word is predicted about its context. For the image representation, we choose six different models. The complex based models, the complex models was developed in 2022, and the efficient net models was in was developed in 2021. The parameters of the model are shown in the table. And in the figure, we can see how an image is transformed into a feature vector passing through through a series of convolution and pooling layers. Our final vector size um, varies from 768 to 1536. For the image, we apply a fine tuning technique on freezing the last 40 layers and changing the learning rate for one exponential minus five to prevent the overfeeding. For the classification step, we train two individual classifiers for each modality, image and text. We choose a logistic regression model, optimize it by using five-fold cross-validation and changing the regularization parameter. Also, we optimize using the top K accuracy metric when K is equal to four, and a maximum iterations of 10,000. The rest of the parameters were set in default mode, and we use the scikit-learn module in Python. At this point, we have two feature vectors, one from image and one from, te from text. We have the probability vectors, and we apply a uh, weighted sum using a lambda factor. This lambda factor takes values from 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 1. Lambda is directly related with the image probabilities, and we are saying that when lambda is equal to 0, we are giving all the weight to the text. When lambda is equal to 1, we are taking only in account the image probabilities, and when lambda is equal to 0 0.5, we are giving the same weight to the bot features. The final category for a pin or an interest for a user is the maximum argument of this final vector of probabilities. These are our results. In the left side, we can see the complex based model. In the right side, we have the efficient net models. And in the bottom, we can see only the text models. The fusion only occurs when lambda takes values different for from 0 and 1. And our best result is from 0 0.54. And it's effectively a fusion between a complex based model and a globe model. We are having an improvement of 10% in comparison with the models that only take in a context or image.
And here is a plot with our best fusions. We can see the lower performance is from a text model, and it's the fast text model. Our best result is the fusion, as I mentioned before. And we are plotting the top K accuracy and can note how is improved mm, when K is equal, when K is increasing. We are taking the top K accuracy because it's a metric more flexible with our problem. And we can note an improvement of more than 10% when K is equal to one in comparison with K is equal to two. In conclusions, the results show that fusion effectively increased the results in comparison when we only use image and text. And the value of lambda that produced better results is the it's of 0 0.5, meaning a balanced distribution of both modalities. For future work, we are working, we want to work with transformers for the text representation, working as a classifier. And we can try proving with other fusion techniques like early fusion or maybe cross modality. Also, we believe that this methodology can be applied to other social networks like Facebook or Instagram and maybe work with other modalities like audio or video. That's all by my part. I welcome to receive any comment or questions at this point. We still have a plenty of time. Is are there any questions? Yes. Este, uh, what kind of application uh, you can tell us about your your work? For example, I think I understand that we can detect fearing in the image. Mm -hmm. For example, for example, I think uh, that we can use this work for detect depression. No. Yes, the fusion in both modalities and all the data in general from social media can provide us information about their, the sentiments of a user. And we predict a sentiment based on the image and a textual description that one user um, load in the social network. Thank you. Very interesting. Yes. Another question? Okay, well, we thank you, um, Areli, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you to you. And here is my email account to receive all the or the all your doubts. Thank you. Well, um, we are ahead of our schedule. So uh, we can uh, go on with our next presentation. In fact, I forgot to tell you uh, that we have uh, 20 minutes total for the uh, presentation, 15 minutes uh, oral presentation and five minutes questions. Uh, I'm not sure if the next presenter is already here. Is uh, Emmanuel de Jesus Gonzalez. Yes. Are you here? Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, give me a moment for uh, put the presentation. Okay, that's fine. Let me know when you're ready. Yes.
Good morning, everyone. Let me, let me. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, one minute, please. Okay. Yes, uh, I'll be announcing uh, our next presentation uh, titled uh, Symmetric Cipher for Grayscale Images Based on Quantum Differential Geometry, uh, presented by Emmanuel de Jesus Gonzalez Ramos. Whenever you're ready, let us know. We have 20 minutes for the presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Manuel Gonzalez Ramos, the author and presenter of the research project, Symmetric Cycle for Grayscale Images, based on quantum differential geometry. The, the presentation is divided in, into six sections and introduction. Uh, the cipher uh, arrived. Uh, from to ensure the security and privacy mm -hmm. of digital elements, preservating the, the confidentiality and integrity of data while the preventing the owner of unitaries. In authorize the access, interception, or manipulation of data of sensitive, sensitive information. The share of the different differential symmetrics conventional, uh, the basis of quantum is approach proposed. Uh, currently, the the quantum technologies in symmetric uh, are QKD, quantum KD post distribution, uh, but the is based on polarization of light photons. You said uh, specialized uh, equipment. Uh, however, and there are no records of methods for system uh, with dynamic structure and um, perform encryption of quantum differential geometry operators. Uh, the key concept, the finite fields, uh, the finite field is, is defined well, as I said, the of integrate. Uh, where P is the maximum number of elements in the set. Uh, the rank is zero to P minus one. Um, in our case, the, the matrix is, is conformed by the set P determining the, in, the number of the indices and fin, in filling the the matrix with applied model P. The reference matrix is the classical matrix with way of uh, model P. In this case, uh, theta three. Uh, and, and reference matrix, uh, uh, the filling is the range zero to 18 in the next or financial setup with model three. Uh, the quantum operation, uh, this three, uh, this work is inspired by the diagrammatic formulation of Brighton quantum groups introduced by Marco Duktevic. Um, uh, he defined the uh, Structure by coproduct, product and twist operator, uh, rename for nuestro work, uh, creation operator, accumulation, and crossing operator. And the, the visual form or uh, the, the operator is 
is to show uh, the structures. The one uh, one ability or a property that use the uh, upper quantum quantum operator is the possibility combine the operators uh, like configuration the CCA configuration uh, conform it but for creation operator crossing and annihilation operator CC, CIC configuration composed by creation and operator annihilation and crossing or even more configuration mass complex like mixed configuration they enabled uh, at uh, more uh, um, generate more com configuration, combinate the uh, three operators in this work. The diagram encryption process uh, for star encryption, I need the K and grayscale gray images. Uh, the K is symmetric, uh, full is, the, yeah, is functional for encryption to decryption uh, the k uh, is i need generate the sub k for the process uh, for the word i am bueno I, I use the configuration c c a and for uh, for finish the, the process, apply the permutation method uh, based in the friend and the finally result is uh, encrypting engine uh, extended. The encryption sub K generation I, I need the K decimal K of 16 length and to convert an Excel decimal K uh, in a vector uh, 32 and is divided in two parts set uh, set uh, so 0 1 to to 151 and the second part uh, set uh, 0 2 to 152 um, is ordered by the matrix proposed. Uh, for generation, the sub K, I need the MCU, MCU for the uh, IP, the, the, operator, the operators, uh, properties of finite fields. Uh, in this uh, 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 in this case, you said MC3 uh, that sum uh, that sum MC1 and MC2 uh, up the module 16. Uh, in the in case the MC4 MC4 uh, MC1 multiply or MC2 uh, up the module. 16 and the suit K generate is composed by configuration proposed in this work. And the creation operator is a coprodo operator. They take a one element and decompose into uh, or duplicate information. The, the field the the, the finite field is to set a 16 to set a 4 and reduce the the, the tone grayscale. Uh, in this case, uh, take a 9 um, for the two elements, locate the 9. Um, return the row and column 
the uh, for this page for this step I need selection the matrix or for for operator and for select the matrix for for I need apply mod suit k mod for the suit k and the suit k is 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 change in, in, for uh, for iterations and crossing operator uh, the purpose and uh, change the, the element is is more not k but trivial trivial vectors um I have three different crossovers. The direct crossover, uh, no swapping in the elements. Indirect cross OB crossover, the elements is uh, change the position. And additive crossover, in this case, uh, I can apply the additive. B mass key uh, or A mass key. Uh, the key is determining for a rank uh, 0 to, to 12. Uh, annihilation operator. The operator is a product and inverse of creation. Uh, take two elements and once in this case the process is happy for creating confusion and in the example the elements input seven and five format the uh, 60 seven, 70, seven, 75 and the uh, row and column result is uh, 86 in hexadecimal value the convert the, the finish is the convert the hexadecimal to decimal in this case the result is 100 100 Three. Uh, for finish the process the encryption, uh, actually the permutation Dunferstel, the permutation Dunferstel um, is a swapping of elements of the index, the generate the random vector and in swapping the original row values. Uh, and generate the permut row. The bueno, the results uh, uh, apply three three tests with uh, a square image, with the image and taller image. And uh, the result is an encrypted image the extent. Uh, I uh, show the uh, no uniform uh, encryption, the, the uniform histograms is the bind for the finite shell, finite fields that's uh, using, but not influencing in the properties or, or security the their cryptogram. Uh, for for comparate uh, I am comparing with uh, I cipher for determine what uh, competitive is the this pre the first version of uh, our cipher um, 
the execution time is very good result, but the IS is implementation take the MATLAB and consider it the where other implementation the times is reduced. Uh, for the NIS, uh, take three metrics. For, for evaluation on the structural complexity, linear independence and final distribution. The binary matrix evaluates the linear independence, the linear complexity, uh, Measure the sequence complexity based on shorter linear recurrence length and serial tests analyze the frequent uh, bit sequence. The, the needs determine uh, the, the randomness, like value 0 0.01 and the if result is greater than this value, uh, the the test is approved, and I have a randomness sequence. Um, in other case, the the test is indeed uh, considered no random. The result with comparison and nice uh, is positive and indicate the competitive cipher. And for conclusion, the the NIS, the NIS test only the algorithm random NIS and complexity. Uh, Sterling near resistance to a statistics attack and ensure the encryption sequence are unpredict unpredicted. Uh, we performing comparison with the information IS can verify numer numerical signs into close but far a prevalent competitive alternative. And um, for future words, uh, the properties of the extended encryption. Uh, will be elaborate to incorporate reversible data hanging techniques and the developer the stream cipher and apply the the apply in others formats the, the images like color and did count and uh, with potential improvements in histogram uniformity and reduce encrypted pictograms. They are reference. Um, thank, thank you for your attention. Thanks for the presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, in your results, uh, I the time of execution of your method increase when an image is more big. For example, Lena, I don't know what is the size of the image. The size is. And if you use an in a ima image more big, the time increase. Uh, yes, uh, the the size the uh, image determine the time execution, but mm -hmm. not is more relevant in. In, in the process encrypted, uh, consider it. Uh, consider what we consider it that the time execution is is competitive. Like I is that I see is a common method of cipher. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Yes. Yes, me. This is encryption method can be applied to other data like text. Yes, the 
uh, first test uh, in this work uh, uh, using the the text uh, uh, character for 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 this version and pass to images. Any other question? We still have time. Uh, well, talking talking about this uh, image, uh, uh, I mean, the histograms looks, uh, I'm curious about the, uh, the way the encrypted histograms uh, is, I don't know, is organized. It's like uh, there are some um, small groups of pixels of the image. Instead of uh, what I was expecting for a cryptography algorithm, that it was kind of uniform. Why do you yeah. think it 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 is the distribution like that? Uh, the, in, in groups. The, the analysis the histogram is for the definite fields in this case and the crossing for the, 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 the operation of addition uh, uh, like no no uh, the matrix uh, working is not this dynamic and uh, for for fish version but uh, the the future world is general generating the matrix dynamic uh, like uh, with the uh, sub k the sub k uh, generating the dynamic matrix uh, in this case uh, it's not okay uh well what you're saying is there must be a way or you're working on you will work on on a way to create a uniform histogram in the future. I need the uh, I need to change the matrix okay. in in okay. the in the process the annihilation operator. Uh, can you show again uh, the speed? of your scheme in comparison with uh, A's? Okay, let, let me see. Uh, okay, your scheme is 13 seconds, figure in the first uh, row. Yes. I've seen a uh, version of A's which, is, uh, which are faster, including uh, they can even encrypt video streaming. So, but these numbers are quite uh, slow. And spe especially because there are some encryption schemes in the literature that are, I don't know, uh, in the order of megabits per second. So in 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 that regards, I mean, in in megabits per second, what what would be uh, the speed of your scheme? Uh, have you have you computed that, or do you have uh, that information? Or that's fine. That's fine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, any other question? Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Okay. Give him an applause, guys. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. Um, let us go back to uh, our schedule. And um, our next presentation is a uh, segmentic segmentation to identify enemies in first person shooters. Wow. Speaker is Erasmo Gabriel Martinez Soltero. Are you ready? Are you around? Sí. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So just give me a minute to present attention. Sure, no problem. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay. So it's okay to start. So I will start. It's okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. Well, uh, my name is is Carlos. Carlos Avila. We are from University of Guadalajara, uh, the campus Cusay. And today we are presenting you the our project that is semantic segmentation to identify enemies in first person shooters. Ah, sorry, my camera. Can you see me? Yeah, okay. So uh, let's move to the introduction. All right, so let's dive into this. In a competitive first person shooter games, quick and accurate enemy identification is vital. Human limitations like reaction time make this task really difficult for players, specifically, specifically uh, as game environments grow more complex. Um, this paper explores how convolutional neural networks, uh, CNNs, and semantic segmentation can enhance real-time enemy detection. Um, comparing seven architectures to balance speed and accuracy in fast-paced gameplay. So, what is a CNN and what is it important? So, Convolutional Neural Network, CNN, is a deep learning architecture designed to process and analyze visual data, um, particularly images. CNNs work by structuring each layer into feature maps that act as parallel planets, planes sorry, or channels, allowing them, allowing them to excel in tasks like image classification, segmentation, and object detection. Uh, think of it like this. CNNs break an image down into layers of features like colors and shapes. By doing this, they're able to classify image, detect objects, or in our case, separate an enemy from the background. So let me explain how convolutional neural network or CNN works in simple terms. <clears throat> so first, uh, we start with the input layer. Uh, this is the raw uh, image data, a collection of pixels that the computer can see. Uh, next, uh, next we have the convolutional layers. Um, think of this as filters that scan the image for important features like uh, edges or textures. After that, oh, sorry. Uh, after uh, after that, the image is processed through these filters, and we reduce the data size using pooling layers. This reduces the amount of data the network has to process, making it more efficient. Once we process and simplify the image data, we pass it to the fully connected layers. Here are all the features that were detected and combined to make sense of the image. Once, um, once we process and simplify the image data, uh, okay. Finally, the Apple layers give us prediction. And 
uh, in a summary, a CNN works by breaking down an image layer by layer, finding important patterns, simplifying the data, the data, and finally making an educated guess about what the image represents. So now let's now let's talk about semantic segmentation. Uh, semantic segmentation is a computer vision technique that classifies each pixel in an image into specific categories. Uh, for example, uh, in this image, only the pixels that from form the dog are classified as dog, while the rest are labeled as a background. So we use uh, this idea to classify the enemies from the background uh, in, in our investigation. Uh, in FPS games, uh, this method uh, helps isolate enemies, allowing faster and more accurate identification during gameplay. So let's move to our methodology. Uh, we use uh, images from the game uh, Counter-Strike 2 because of the realistic on their graphics. Uh, we thought that it was uh, a better decision from other games. But in the training, we also use uh, uh, images from the game Battlefield. And but the majority was uh, Counter-Strike 2. We use a sample of 1,000 images uh, that we labeled manually using uh, an open source tool named LabelMe that uh, is coded in Python uh, that generates uh, JSON files that contain uh, the polygon uh, coordinates uh, of the enemy regions <clears throat> with everything else classified as background. So we just uh, uh, we just use like the enemies and the rest was just background. So uh, to to get the mask, uh, we uh, choose we chose uh, seven different CNN architectures. Uh, first, uh, the UNED architecture and their uh, its variations, like uh, UNED with spatial separable convolutions and with depth separable convolutions. Uh, then we have uh, HRNet and Xfuse. <clears throat> then we have CGNet and DabNet. We use these uh, architectures because of the. Um, it was easier to us work with these architectures because they need uh, they work fine with um, low quantities of data, so we don't have to make the the data set uh, too long. Uh, the training was performed using two different systems, two different computers. Uh, one with an, a processor Intercore uh, i7 and, uh, and a graphic card RTX 350. And the second one uh, with an Intercore i5 and, and a GTX 6050. <clears throat> Models were trained incrementally. Uh, first, we uh, grab an image, and with that image, we train it uh, a thousand times. Then, um, with 10 images, then 100, and finally, with the entire data set uh, across 200 epochs in each model. Um, then uh, to evaluate the performance of the of each model, uh, we use a dice score and an intersection over union, which measure uh, how well the predicted segmentation matches the ground truth. Uh, processing speed was measured in frames per second. Uh, this this is a a really common uh, way to evaluate performance in in games and to assess real-time applicability. 
So uh, let's explain uh, the evaluation matrix that we used. Um, the DICE score is a metric used to evaluate the accuracy of uh, image segmentation models. <clears throat> it measures the overlap between the predicted uh, segmentation and the actual ground truth. The DICE score ranges from 0 to 1, where 1 indica indicates perfect overlap between the predicted and actual regions, and 0 mean no, means no overlap at all. <clears throat> then we have uh, for the other side, uh, intersection over union is a metric for evaluating image segmentation, and uh, it calculates the ratio between the area of the overlap and the area of union between the predicted segmentation and the ground truth. The IOU OU ranges from zero to one as well, and one indicates perfect segmentation, complete overlap, and zero means no overlap. So let's talk about our results. Uh, we organize it in, organize them in uh, two tables. One to uh, to um, see the the accuracy, and the the other one for the processing speed, that is FPS. So in our results, uh, we can see that UNES, UNET DS achieved uh, a high segmentation quality with a DICE score of 0 0.7465, while uh, HRNet and Xfuse followed closely with a uh, high accuracy. Mm, however, uh, UNET uh, also provide the best balance between accuracy and speed. That's why we choose it like the best overall, because of the uh, 13 uh, frames per second. And we can see as well that lighter models like CGNet and DAVNet offer faster processing, but lower accuracy. But here we can see uh, the real footage of uh, the results uh, on my left. Uh, you can see the the real image. In the center, we can see the mask. Uh, that is the result, and then we can see the the two combined of the identification of the enemy. So uh, to wrap up uh, this study, uh, demonstrating how semantic segmentation powered by CNNs can significantly enhance enemy detection in FPS games. Uh, and based on our results, among the seven architectures tested, uh, UNETDS showed the best balance between speed, accuracy, and accuracy for real-time performance. While models like HRNet and XFUSE provide higher precision at the cost of lower processing times. Um, these insights uh, offer practical applications for game developers highlighting how can how AI can improve the player experience by optimizing both detection accuracy and gameplay fluidity. We believe that uh, this uh, investigation can um, work uh, like using uh, data sets of video games to train uh, models for real um, real environments as well. But I, I think that that is for future investigation. And and that's it. If you feel free for asking questions. Any questions? Did you have any numerical result about your segmentation or your metrics? Okay. How we did it or or what? I don't know. You you mentioned two metrics for make the segmentation, but I don't know if 
if the if the result it's a numerical result or it's only an image uh, of the metrics it's a numeric result uh can you show the table the, the, okay, go ahead. yeah okay yeah it's a numeric result and um if it is one it's really good <laughs> it's almost like perfect but you almost never get a one so yeah and um, the time well which one is the best model uh or uh, based on our results uh unit ds was our best model because of the relation with accuracy and and fast processing because as you can see uh, maybe hrnet and nextfuse uh, show a better accuracy <clears throat> but in terms of in terms of processing speed uh, unit ds was better Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Any, any other questions? Yes. How you can increase the frames per second? I think it's a low, a low result because the games in the market need more frames per seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we think about that, and we believe that. Um, using uh, there are two solutions for that, and uh, probably uh, it's like using uh, dedicated hardware for that, like a uh, better GPU, because of our our computers were like laptops, and we believe that if we use a better hardware, we can get uh, more uh, processing speed. Uh, and the other hand, we can use, um, we can choose another architecture and start start investigating about something, another architecture that we can use. Thank you. More questions? I have some questions uh, okay. about intuition. I mean, how do you couple uh, the game with the uh, neural networks? So you get uh, an output of the game and go through the neural networks, or uh, I mean that they are totally independently each other, or, or how well, is it connected? What we basically, uh, what we basically did was um, capture a uh, view. Uh, from the game, uh, then we um, with a script uh, divided into frames. So those frames were processed by the models. Uh, okay. And so yeah, is that the answer? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So uh, I would I would say that. Uh, Frame rate, it's good for a uh, laptop. You said you use an, an i5 Intel processor, an i7? Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, the one that, for example, the uh, IOU or DICE metrics are quite uh, low in the average. One is uh, what is uh you got the complete uh segmentation and zero is nothing right yeah yeah so uh, what do you need to increase that uh metrics uh, more uh, training images uh, probably a bigger data set okay uh, yeah okay well, uh, if there are no more questions, I will uh, we will appreciate your talk. Thank you very much. And uh, I think this is our last talk of our session. Am I right? Is there any people from CCA, CCE there in, in the room? 
guess not. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. See you in session CS5. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Hey, Assalamu Hello. Yeah. Doctor Rogelio? Uh, I'm Adelante. Doctor. Yeah, go ahead. I'm here. I'm still here. Yes, I'm here. Now next one is mine. Is there any other presentation? Yes. Oh, I'm really uh, sorry. I, I was I was told that it was rescheduled. Are you Abka Jabez? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. It was rescheduled to 15:50 uh, p.m. But if you are here, let's start. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. And uh, your presentation is enhancing anxiety prediction. Leveraging yes. machine learning with functional design metrics. Yes. You can start, please. Okay. Is it visible? Uh, slides are visible to you? Yes. Okay. Let me start now. Uh, my topic of the presentation is the enhancing anxiety prediction leveraging machine learning with functional design metrics. Uh, my name is Abka Javed. I am from Pakistan, UIT Lahore. Okay, this is the introduction of my research paper. Uh, basically, anxiety disorders resulting from societal and uh, individual stretch, uh, reflecting about 16% of the global population and uh, significantly impaired daily functioning leading to a high mortality rate associated with depression, anxiety, and related to mental diseases. Uh, normally, different individuals remain unaware of the link between the chronic anxiety and mental illness, highlighting the urgent need for effective treatment and the challenges that they have to deal uh, related to professional uh, life uh, facing through the meeting growing demand. So anxiety, depression, and stress disorders impose an economic burden uh, of approximately 74 billion euros annually and lead to reduced community involvement uh, among affected uh, individuals. So, uh, so they cannot even participate in any uh, of the activities leading to uh, their co-curriculum activities and the societal uh, benefits. So the machine learning approaches are crucial for analyzing complex data sets to predict anxiety disorders uh, on time, despite the challenges involved. Uh, different uh, machine learning models or techniques are used that effectively handle the uh, medical data. Here is the traditional machine learning approaches that we are uh, traditionally used that uh, we get a particular data set and apply a different pre-processing techniques on it. Then the particular machine learning model that we are selected uh, for related to our uh, data, um, we divided it into the training and testing phase and then the, uh, it gives us the results in the form of prediction or classification of the particular disease. And then uh, basically we need of the assessment of machine learning approaches is uh, critical uh, basically we apply we use our various machine learning models for the prediction of the anxiety depression and the mental illness but there is uh, no standard uh, parameter are set there to evaluate the uh, perfect model uh, for the prediction uh, necessitating the design of standard evaluation metrics for accurate and early prediction of the diseases uh, existing parameters are measuring model accuracy at the evaluation level, just like uh, we predict the precision recall and the F1 scores, uh, which uh, lack the standardization and do not effectively evaluate the key aspects uh, such as the searching time, resource utilization, and the algorithm complexity. 
Uh, in the in our proposed work or a proposed uh, framework, we focus on the design level metrics, utilizing the ISO 9126 model to enhance the early prediction of anxiety disorders without extensive uh, testing phases. Uh, basically, it evaluates the model uh, before going towards the um, evaluation phase. Then these uh, design level metrics aim to help uh, users identify efficient algorithms and optimize model selection while addressing the sensitivity of anxiety predictions. Here is our uh, search query string that we are applied to uh, detect our data from the online repositories. Uh, such as a Google Scholar and CI um, and many more. And then uh, we basically use the keywords um, by comparison of the machine learning or supervised learning or unsupervised learning techniques and um, merge it with the software metrics and the quality metrics. So we get the uh, resultant metrics uh, uh, by searching the uh, by applying the following uh, defined uh, query string. We get out these uh, papers that we are applied on the. Um, some of them are just working on the machine learning techniques. Other of them are based on the design level uh, and number of metrics and the standard uh, any standard they have used uh, to evaluate the uh, number of metrics and which functionality they are used. So our proposed uh, work is focused on the uh, design level machine learning models uh, by using the five number of metrics having the standard of ISO 9126 with work on the functionality parameter. Uh, this is the proposed metrics for evaluating the design of the uh, machine learning. So here is the complete standard standard that defined by the IS 9126 design quality parameters. All these are the design quality parameters. We select from them the uh, functionality parameter. And then we further categorize it into the uh, uh, suitability, accuracy, interoperability, security, and the compliance. Now the, uh, uh, accuracy parameter in the accuracy parameter we further uh, dig down it into the robustness throughput confirmation explainability and the privacy uh, then the throughput is further we uh, measure it by implementing the design uh, of machine learning model so in the machine learning model we have the four basic parameters uh, that we proposed the well, first one is the data set and then the data transformation machine learning algorithms and the last one is the training and testing results uh, that we get by applying the uh, design of machine learning to calculate the throughput of the uh, in the accuracy phase so um, uh, this uh, data set design level metrics that we are defined, we are going to implement it to predict the uh, anxiety disorder uh, by implementing the particular machine learning model. So this study particularly uh, measures the functionality accuracy uh, using the ISO 9126 standard, uh, which validating the machine learning model uh, uh, through components such as data set, data confirmation, machine learning model, and the training and testing results that are essential uh, for measuring the, any machine learning model uh, and uh, to detect the accuracy of the uh, model at the evaluation level. By incorporating uh, these components, the evaluation process ensures the robustness um, fosters continuous improvement and provide the stakeholders to make the informed decisions, ultimately aiming to validate the accuracy of uh, a particular machine learning design model uh, in predicting as anxiety effectiveness. So in this framework, uh, we basically pass the data set collection uh, to the model and apply various pre-processing techniques on it, just as uh, data cleaning, data transformation, data feature engineering, and then these pre-processed data further pass to the model implementation phase. In the model implementation, we select any model uh, which further divided their pre-processed data into training and testing phase, and then we, uh, uh, by uh, training or testing, apply the testing on the particular data, we get the prediction of the uh, algorithm uh, by using the machine learning model, which uh, gives us the categorization of the disease, presence of anxiety, or prediction of the risk level of the particular disease. Okay, so here is the main methodology of our work. Uh, 
uh, our main data set are the our main attributes particularly are the data set in the data set we calculate it by using the sparsity uh, privacy and scalability metrics and apply and assign um, each particular attribute to the uh, three scores uh, if we are applying the sparsity in the data set, we assign that our model achieved the three scores. Then if we um, make sure this privacy in the data set, then we further add up the three scores. And then if uh, also apply the scalability in the data, then three scores are also added. Then the data transformation, we apply the pre-processing, data cleaning, feature engineering techniques, and also assign the three, three scores in each model. And then uh, afterwards, we select the machine learning model. Machine learning model, we apply any of the machine learning model on it and assign the score is one. In the training and testing results, we measure the three parameters, uh, uh, which one are the uh, accuracy, F measures, mean errors, and each are the three scores respectively. So here is the P. Uh, so we proposed this equation by using these uh, attributes and by assigning the values of each code. Uh, we denoted the parameters in design of ML and the A denoted the accuracy parameter. So P of A is particularly the parameter at the design level of machine learning. Uh, here is, uh, we calculate the complete every measure the accuracy of the model by using all these uh, parameters. Then we say that we add up all the uh, parameters that we are used to measure the accuracy of the model. So a here, here is the A is the total number of data set. Uh, B is the total number of A data set uh, that are pre-processed. And C is the total number of A ML approaches. And the G is defined as the total number of A in testing and training phases. So uh, we apply this equation or or data to predict the anxiety level uh, here is the validation phase in the validation the proposed uh, work focuses on measuring machine learning model approaches uh, at the design level particularly for models which handles the textual data uh, our proposed work not only tackle all the data types but it is limited uh, in the domain of textual data uh, using an anxiety data to predict anxiety levels uh, the study further utilizes the random forest gradient boosted trees and CN trees to predict anxiety, which evaluate the design level in two scenarios. Uh, one with irrelevant variables requiring pre-processing and another with pre-processed data for improved accuracy. Uh, a linguistic uh, focus data sets from Kaggle enhanced with real-time data, which consists of uh, 15,049 items and was collected through the questionnaire, uh, ensuring privacy and reliability without specific uh, geographic information. Uh, we basically uh, collect the data from, through the questionnaire and hide the details of the individuals uh, on which they have affected by the anxiety pre-processing including transformation and feature engineering uh, significantly enhances the accuracy of predictions in the second scenario as reflected in the results presented in the validation table so here is the validation table uh, of, for the scenario one uh, in the uh, random forest when we are uh, going towards the random forest algorithm basically we apply the techniques on it Somehow, uh, first one is the data set uh, collection. So in the data set collection, we say that we just um, apply the privacy on it. And uh, in the second phase, uh, we go towards the pre-processing phase. And then uh, third one is the uh, machine learning model selection. And the final one is the training and testing phase of the model where we are going to measure the accuracy, uh, precision recall or something. Uh, then we evaluate passing our values to the equation three that uh, we propose in our model. And then uh, this equation is passed towards the equation four, uh, where we uh, apply a particular scale on each and calculate the score. Uh, the random forest provides us the score is 0 0.51, uh, and the uh, gradient boosting gives us the score 0 0.57, and the decision tree gives us the score is 0 0.62.
and these models we also pass in the second scenario where we claim that uh, we apply all the predefined attributes the model and achieve the highest results uh, so um, when we apply our predefined uh, data or attributes to the model we get the uh, random forest gives us the score 0.91 and gradient boosting gives us a 0.96 score and the decision tree provides us the uh, 0.94 parameter value okay uh, here is the graph or our comparison graph between the scenario one data and the scenario two data uh, implementing the pre-processing technique on data which enhances the accuracy in anxiety prediction um, which may neglecting the uh, yields threshold meeting but less accurate results uh, in healthcare uh, results are influenced by community factors and related to features uh, making feature engineering and data cleaning crucial for accuracy. The defined attributes effectiveness is assessed using metrics um, that defined in the figure and comprehensive data transformation techniques lead to improved results. Here is the conclusion uh, uh, of our study as the current metrics uh, for anxiety prediction using machine learning are um, in educate as a patient often avoid discussing their symptoms uh, complicating accurate predictions and delaying diagnosis here is the major concern while we are going towards to predict the anxiety while various ml models exist for anxiety prediction they generally lack standardized evaluation methods for assessing accuracy the article proposes design level evaluation metrics based on the iso 9126 standard incorporating functionality accuracy and design throughput validation of these metrics includes ex uh, examining data set data transformation techniques and machine learning approaches into scenarios using raw data for prediction and incorporating all parameters for efficient pre-processing future applications aim to assess patients uh, anxiety levels using uh, real-time data sets so these are the references that we are uh, presented in our paper and uh, using in our study thank you this is from my side is there any question you can ask me any questions Okay. Uh, by uh, when you when you say by uh, assessing anxiety level by real time, uh, it could be using uh, video images or or just uh, or how how can you predict the anxiety level using? Are you using? Uh, I'm sorry, but I missed this part. Uh, using um, video or or just uh, uh, words audio uh, we, go ahead we, we are using textual data to predict the anxiety level ah, okay i got it. just textual data yeah Are just textual data audio? here is the limitation of our study that we can extend it on a different data set as well we can make it generic but uh, for the time being it's uh, just focus on the textual data as we evaluate our study evaluates the model that deals with the textual data excellent are there any more questions well we thank you for your presentation Thanks and so much. how do you speak, how do you say your name abka javed is that correct yes abka javed excellent okay thank you very much for your presentation thank you, again thank and you. i'm afraid the i guess this is the final presentation of our session cs4 so we'll see you uh in session five thank you very much all of you